Thank you. If uh, you have your Bibles this morning, I would ask you to please turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 3. And as you're turning there, a um, couple of things I'd like to point out to you in case you've missed it already. Um, from the beginning of the singing through the reading of the Word of God, through the remainder of the singing, um, everything points toward you coming back to the Lord. Uh, all the songs that have been sung, the word that has been read already, and so may I tell you today, it is no surprise to me um, what the Lord, I believe, has shown me, and I'll do the best I can uh, to be brief uh, within reason. Um, but uh, I sat down here yesterday and uh, I know that, you know, the place would be full of people, uh, visitors would abound, and uh, some of you all maybe uh, have heard eloquent preaching in your past, and I, I wish the day that the message that I was going to preach to you uh, is a sophisticated message, but it's not. Uh, I wish today that it was maybe more eloquent, but it probably won't be. What it will be today is a very simple message to help you to understand that you don't have to stay where you are. I sat back there where Jackie is sitting yesterday, and uh, I was talking to the Lord and trying to get my thoughts about me and I said, Lord, the place is going to be full tomorrow. What is it that you want me to tell them? And I then just sat there and waited on the Lord. And as I waited, and as I looked about the sanctuary and saw your faces, saw that you would be here, and I waited on the Lord the Lord said, I just want you to tell them that there is a way out. So this morning, I want to preach to you that there is a way out. And I want to title the message today, In Case of Fire, Follow the Signs. I'll let that sink in. Shouldn't be hard. If you look up there, you'll see what I saw. You'll see an exit sign. If you look over there, you'll see the other one that I saw. And I thought, Lord, he said, no. He said, I, I just want you to tell them that there is a way out. And I thought, okay, Lord, if that's what you'd have me to preach, seems awful simple to me. Seems that folks ought to be able to see that. But this morning, about 20 minutes after 6, my telephone rung. It was a young woman. She said, Pastor. I said, yes. She said, how you doing? I said, good. She began to tell me about a difficulty that she had with her car. She said, now I know, preacher, that you don't work on cars on Sunday. I said, you're right. She said, I just wanted you to know, preacher, that it's coming your way. I said, okay. I said, besides that, how you doing? Been looking for you to come visit the church. She said these words to me. She said, well, you know, preacher, my husband is off on Sunday and Monday, and so I work 12 on Sunday and 12 on Monday so that he can take care of the kids while I'm working. I said these words, I understand that life can make it so that it seems like that you just cannot get untangled. But I want to tell you today 
There is a way out. I know I've heard all of the excuses that Brother Rob read about earlier. But in case of fire, would you follow the signs? Chapter 3 of 2 Peter says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you might be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, and by the way, for our visitors, sometimes as I read, I stop and I put things in hillbilly terms so that they are easy to understand. To my people that are now apologizing to your visitors, don't, it's who I am. It's what I do. Verse three, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust or the things that they desire. Hmm. Knowing first, they're going to come, they're going to walk after their own lust, their own desire, and this is what they're going to say. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Now, I want to stop there for just a moment before I preach, and this is audience participation. How many of you all feel like that when you get up on Monday, from Monday to Saturday, the things that you are accustomed to in life are the norm? That's just Monday comes and Monday happens. How many of y'all have had a Monday on a Tuesday? How many of y'all had a Monday on a Thursday? Yeah, and the scripture here teaches us that they said everything is always the same. But may I tell you, if you are tangled up in this web of this world, things do not have to remain as they've always been. Hmm. I'll get into the message in a minute. Just want to lay the groundwork. The scripture here says in verse 5, for this they willingly are ignorant. In other words, they choose not to believe it. Now, let me, before I start preaching, let you know that I understand that before I'm done today, there are some of you that are here in this congregation that are unsaved, that are going to choose not to believe what this preacher preaches. I know that. I, I, I'm realistic. I understand that. But I also want you to understand before I get into the message, just because you do not believe it does not mean that it is not real. Amen. Let that sink in. Let me go on. In verse 6, the scripture says, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, but... The heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved. Now, underline this in, in your mind. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, a thousand years as one day, and the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all men should come to repentance. Now, let me tell you what that means. It means the Lord wants you to be saved. That means the church, amen church, wants you to be saved. Amen. That means your family wants you to be saved. Amen. That means the stranger on the street, if he's saved, wants you to be saved. Amen. Just saying. Now, verse 10, and then I'll get into my message. 
But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. You say, well, preacher, that's an awful harsh message, awful harsh scripture for friend and family day when you're supposed to be making my visitors feel good. So now I'll make you all feel good. I just read to you that the Bible said that there's going to come a day when Jesus is going to come back. There's going to come a day when judgment is going to come upon this earth and all of them that are ungodly and unsaved, the Bible said, are going to be burned up with a fervent heat. But I, I want to make you feel good today and tell you that there is a way out. In case of fire, follow the sign. Hey, Rich. In case of fire, follow the sign. Preacher, you're crazy. Maybe I am. But I got to looking at the exit sign and there's a couple of things about this exit sign that I want you to understand, and oh, by the way, that when the Lord comes back, you that are here better have an exit strategy because if you're left behind, it ain't going to be good. Now, let me go on. The exit sign, both of those and that one that's up there, one of the things that I, I seen about it as I sat back there yesterday is I understood that the word exit is written in red. Now I'm about to preach. <laughs> the word written in red is done so that it might get your attention and cause you to understand that in case of fire, this is the way that you ought to go. Now, those of you that are familiar with your Bibles, most of them, the things that Jesus said are written down in red. And everybody said, well, but you know, preacher, that's just something that man did. I understand that. So may I take it one step further and cause you to see that the sign that we got, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And may I tell you that on Calvary, he was lifted up and the blood was shed for you. Amen. Exit sign. The word is written in red and it's written in red so that it might simply draw your attention to the way out. Now, I, I know when I, I begin to think about this exit sign, I, I know everybody's saying, well, the preacher, he's kind of weird, but let me tell you, flip them lights off, Rich. You had them off. Flip them off, all of them. It'll be all right. Uh, thank you, Rob. Just for a minute. I want to show you all something about them. Now, I want you to look. You look up here if you want to. My people saying, man, our preacher's done lost it. <laughs> Maybe I have, but you'll get this in just about a minute. I want you to look up above there and up above there and up above there and up above there. And you say, preacher, what are you talking about? There's something else that I noted about this exit sign that it doesn't make any difference how dark that it gets. The exit sign is still got a light down on the inside of it that glows out. So then you say, preacher, what are you talking about? May I tell you that my exit sign is the light of the world. And he said, I came into the world 
world that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I figured out it's going to get you all can turn them up if you want to. But I figured out that this world is waxing worse and worse and darker and darker. But I've got some how many Christians we got in here this morning. Put your hand up. I got some good news for you. Because Jesus went away, he said that because I am gone, you now are supposed to be the light of the world. What's that mean, preacher? That means, and I got to thinking about how we get tangled up in this world and can't find our way out. But may I tell you, Christian, listen to the pastor. In your workplace, you ought to be a light in the darkness rather than becoming a part of who they are. You ought to stand out and tell them there is a way out. In case of fire, got to thinking about them exit signs that come down here the other day when we had lost two or part of our power on two legs and one of them had went out, I come down here and I got to looking around and I noticed that the exit lights was lit up and you say, preacher, what in the world are you talking about now? Well, may, may I tell you, and, and I'll try to be pastoral today, but it may not happen. May I tell you, I, I began to think about that, and I understand that as the, word, the world gets worse, it's going to get tougher on God's people. But may I tell you, I've got some more good news about them exit signs. If we lose all the worldly power, them things have got a power source of their own. And you say, preacher, what in the world am I talking about now? May I tell you today that those of us that are saved, and on our way to heaven, even though it may get difficult on the church, we've got a power source down on the inside of us that ought to keep us moving toward the side. Somebody will say, well, you know, preacher, I got it. I got it really tough as a Christian. I'm the only Christian in my workplace, or maybe you might even tell me, preacher, I've got it really tough. I'm the only Christian in my family. Well, may I tell you, if you're the only Christian in your family, or if you're the only Christian in your workplace, may I encourage you today to get down beside your bed sometime and begin to cry out to God and say to God, God, if I get weary in well-doing, then God, would you restore my vessel that in my darkest hour, God, I can shine my brightest. I told somebody, and they look at me kind of sideways, I think it's a great time to be a church. I do. I mean, you cannot depend on Washington. Oh, wait, man, they told me they put this live on Facebook. Okay, for everybody that's live on Facebook, you can't depend on Washington. You can't depend on the banks. You cannot depend on those around you. But may I tell you that there is an exit sign that's got its own power source. And on him, I can depend. When the world will turn its back, when you get the pink slips, and I know I'm about to get myself in trouble. Some of you all here this morning, are tangled up and don't know way, no way out because there's things that you got in your life that are controlling you. Oh, how does the preacher know such a thing? Because in a crowd this side, may I tell you that none of us are immune and the devil's gonna do everything that he can Every once in a while we get to the point that we get a woe is me attitude or we look and we'll say, preacher, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I just can't do it. But may I tell you that when you can't do it any longer, if you look to the sign, there's a way out of where you are. To the addict, let me preach. 
There is a way out. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? May I tell you that there is a way. There is one that can make you feel better than any drug that's on the outside. Amen. To the alcoholic. Oh man, the preacher's calling him out by name. No, preacher ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm just telling you, to those of you that are struggling to find a way out and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried, may I tell you that if you put down the worldly power and that thing that makes you feel good and you look to the exit sign, there is a way out of where you are. You say, preacher, how do you know that? Because he brought me out of it and I understand what my God can do. Listen, in the darkest hour of our world and in the darkest hour of our community and the darkest hour of our families, the church ought to be a place that is shining in the darkness saying, run on me, sanctuary. Other thing that I noticed about this exit sign and you'll notice them, and you'll notice that one there. The exit sign has a purpose. And oh, by the way, it's not about the exit sign. In case of fire, follow the sign. Uh-oh, we're about to lose our Facebook feed. <laughs> That'll be all right. Y'all, in case of fire, follow the preacher. Y'all stay in your seat. I'm not going anywhere. I want you to see this. You know what that is? Y'all looking and saying, now is he talking about it's a way out or is he talking about it's a door? I'm talking about both. Because Jesus said, I am the door. You can't get there. You can't get out. You can't do it on your own. You ain't got enough strength. But if you will walk through the door that is called Christ Jesus, he will see you all the way to glory. The exit sign just simply shows you where the door is. I, I want to be an exit sign. I do. I want to be a sign that God can make a difference in a hillbilly's life. I want to be a sign that God can take a broken family and put it back together again. I want to be a sign that no matter how heavy the burden might seem, that there is a God that said, cast your care on me, I care about you. I want to be an exit sign. Tell people where the door is. Some of y'all say, man, I can't wait to find the door. <laughs> I give you opportunity to do that right after bit. An exit sign is simply hung there that it might lead to the door and the door might lead you to safety. May I? tell you this morning that except that you go through and by Jesus, you will never find the peace and the safety you desire. A young woman this morning, as she was telling me, and she said, you know, preacher, I, I'm warming up to it. Preacher, I am, you know, I, I, I'm thinking about it. And then she told me, her father, by the way, is one of my best friends. He's a pastor up in Mansfield. Whew, oops, they put that on Facebook. We might have to edit that. She told me, she said, preacher, now you all listen to me. She said, I was going to come. But dad was busy and couldn't come with me. I said, your dad would have told you, you're a grown woman, you can come without him. 
You say, preacher, that's awful plain. No, let me make it a little more plain. Some of you are waiting on somebody else to move before you get up and go through the door. You're grown up. Get up on your own accord and run to Jesus before it's too late. You keep waiting on somebody else, you'll never get there. Well, you know, preacher, I would... But you know, there's a lot of hypocrites in the church. Step on them buzzards and use them to get to where Jesus is. Don't let them keep you. I'm telling you, if you was in a building and it was on fire, you would trample the person in front of you to get out the door. That's how we ought to be to get to Jesus. We ought to quit treating it like, well, you know, preacher, I've got all of my life. But may I tell you that the Bible says that there is no promise of tomorrow in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart. What's that mean, preacher? That means quit putting it off, dummy. Oh, that's that hillbilly. You say, preacher, you ought not talk like that. But may I tell you, if you keep rejecting Jesus, that's exactly what you are. You say, well, but, but, no. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Exit sign, it just simply leads to the door. Let me tell you one more. Then I'll try to close. The scriptures here that I read, they they said that they were willingly ignorant. In other words, when they were being warned, when they were being told that the earth was going to be flooded, nobody paid any attention to the preacher until the rain began to fall. You know, something else I figured out about exit sign. Nobody pays any attention to them until they need them. We don't. They're just simply there. They're always there. They always say the same thing. Always got the same message. They always got the same light on. They always hung above the same door. And nobody ever pays any attention to them until they need them. But may I tell you that the scripture is clear. That one day after a while that this world as we know it is going to melt with a fervent heat. And then the Bible said that they will run to and fro. And you know what they're looking for? They're looking for an exit sign. They're looking for a preacher that will give them the word of God. But the Bible said, but they found it not. If you wait until after it's over, it's too late. We exit signs. Nobody pays any attention to them until there's a fire. I wonder I thought, Lord, I want it to be plain. I I, I want them to understand. I I want them to see. And and so may may I read this to you. The Bible said that the earth and the elements thereof are going to melt with a fervent heat. It's going to be burned up. And then in verse 11, then it says, seeing that all of these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation?" In other words, it's going to happen. What kind of person ought you to be? I got to tell you what, if the place is on fire, you'd be a person looking to get out. You just would. You say, but, but preacher, the place is not on fire. <laughs> Exit sign says, Jesus said, in an hour that you think not, the Son of Man is going to return. And then he said, pray. And he said, watch that you don't be caught unawares. You know what that is? That's people that are just going to work every day. People just living life. Well, preacher, I'm not a, a bad person. I never asked you if you were. But may I ask you this? 
Are you a saved person? You see, because whether you're good or bad, you can still get caught up in the fire. Well, preacher, I, I go to church once in a while. I never ask you if you did, although you ought to. I just simply want to know if you're this kind of person. He says, because this is going to happen, you ought to be, you ought to be the type of person that has holy conversation. And then it says this, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. May I, may I say, and then I'll close. One of these days, this passage of scripture is going to come to pass. One of these days, this same Lord that they said we've heard all of our lives of Jesus to come back and he ain't come back yet, preacher. That may be true. However, may I tell you today that one day soon now I believe I'm going to see the signs. I'm going to slip through heaven's door. I'm going to be there for eternity. In case of fire, would you follow the sign? Lost person, let me ask you a question. And I just want you to put this in your mind. When you look around this world today, have you ever seen it like it is now? Lost person, when you look around you in this world today, have you ever seen a time when hate as as strong as it is today? Have you ever seen a time when moms and dads, sons and daughters have turned against one another? Have you ever seen a time when it seems like that the wickedness of men just grows worse and worse and worse? And I look at the world and from my perspective, I have to answer that question and say no. But may I tell you that the Bible said, just before the Lord's return, it's going to get just like that. In case of fire, would you follow the sign? Would you look to the door in the darkest part of your life that you may be going through right now? That part that you have struggled and struggled and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried. May I tell you, Jesus is the door. And he said, if you'll come to me and through me, heaven can be your home. I believe with my whole heart this morning that you're here because God ordained for you to be here to hear this message. I believe this morning that there is somebody that's standing there. So preacher, I, I, I just don't know. Well, let me ask you, Brother Kyle, if you'd come to the piano. Let me ask you, when you came in this morning, did you notice the exit signs or did you just come in, take a seat and just go about church as usual? Doesn't mean the exit sign's not necessary. And doesn't mean that one day soon, we're not gonna need to exit out the door. So every head bowed and nobody's looking around in reverence to the Lord. Just for a moment, I want to ask you,